Okay, first thing I want to cover this morning is the process for turning in work on the LMS. And I wanted to point out the fact that there is, in the student resources module, a content page that says how to submit assignments to the LMS. And I want to click on that and kind of show you the directions and information that are that's in this content page. I think most of you are familiar with the process of submitting work when it's from Drive, meaning it's a Word document that's either saved on the computer or it's saved in your drive. And depending on where it's saved, you can either do a file upload and choose the file from wherever it is within your computer, or I can click on Google Docs, and when I do that, it'll give you access to your Google Drive. You could select the assignment and submit that there. The problem comes in when we have something that's in the notebook. If it's in the notebook, then it's not something that we can easily get to the drive without going through a few steps. So what we're gonna do is uh, for those who are able to, we're going to use uh, our you know, iOS devices or phones or anything that can take a picture, and we're going to use a application called Cam Scanner. So you're going to need Cam Scanner, and you're going to need uh, Drive basically on your phone. And with those apps, you can follow the steps that I've laid out here. I think there's 12 steps that will allow you to take a picture from the notebook and add that picture to your Drive automatically as a PDF. That's a big thing in making sure that we're doing a PDF and not JPEGs because JPEGs don't work real well with SpeedGrader within the LMS. Okay. So I will be posting a video shortly that shows an actual demonstration of doing this. But for now, for those who are interested, I would have you follow these steps. It's pretty straightforward. And you should be able to add the image within your notebook to your drive. And then from there, you could select your Google Docs to submit that. Okay. So for yesterday's activity 1.3, we may have had a submission of the page from your notebook and then a second submission from like the conclusion questions, which was a Word document. So in this case, two submissions for this activity. For anybody who's not able to use the app on their phone, we also have a scanner. So we have a place in the room with which we can scan the work. If you're going to go that route, I would ask that you have a flash drive. So with the scanner and your flash drive, we can scan images from your notebook. It'll automatically create PDFs out of those images, and then you can upload those to Google Docs or Google Drive before you submit them. So let's talk about today's activity then. We're moving on to 1.4, which is product improvement. We're gonna start with the PowerPoint about brainstorming solutions. For those who are keeping track in the notebook, in the table of contents, today is September 2nd, and this is going to be notes on brainstorming solutions. In today's PowerPoint, we're gonna talk about brainstorming, meaning we're gonna define what it is, we'll talk about the rules that will govern the way that we do brainstorming within this classroom. We'll go over different types of techniques that can be used to do brainstorming. We'll talk about concept generation dysfunction, something that would prevent you from doing a proper brainstorming. And then if you get stuck, what do we do? If I get stuck, we're not really getting ideas, what's the process for that? So to define brainstorming, it would be something that is a group technique for solving problems, generating ideas, stimulating creative thinking, involves collecting ideas without regard to feasibility. So off the bat, even if it's not a possible solution to our problem, if it's something that you think of, we would add this to our starting list. The rules that we'll use for brainstorming, and we'll cover these individually, are no criticism allowed, work for quantity, so off the bat we're looking for as many ideas as possible, we're going to welcome piling on, and I'll explain what that is, and then allow free-for-all. So starting with the first rule, no criticism allowed, there is the tendency to automatically evaluate what someone else suggests as an idea. And you start thinking immediately, yes, that's a good idea, or no, that's a bad idea, yes, that would work, no, that's not going to work. We want to try to hold off on doing that. The idea is we want to allow all members to contribute. And if you have a tendency to immediately start criticizing someone else's idea, they're going to shut down. They're going to start, you know, stop generating ideas, and we want to avoid doing that. So no criticism allowed. We want to go for high quantity brainstorming. So the number is what we're, we're looking for, as many ideas as possible. Not necessarily has to be quality, but quantity. And the idea is that if we do a brain drain, we will have, or hopefully come up with the most innovative and creative ideas. 
And the more ideas we come up with, the more likely it is that the quality ideas will surface. So the amount of quantity will lead to quality solutions to whatever that we're trying to solve. We're gonna welcome piling on. Piling on occurs when a member's idea produces a similar or enhanced idea. And this happens quite often. If, if someone suggests an idea and you were thinking something similar, if you add on to what they had already suggested, that's the idea of piling on and that's okay. So we will record the original idea and the one that has been piled on. And then finally allow free for all. Outrageous, humorous, and seemingly unimportant ideas should be recorded. Again, we're not judging. Someone throws something out there and it's completely off the wall, great. We're not criticizing that idea. It's possible for the most off the wall idea sometimes to be where the solution for the problem lays and the sky is the limit. So in this process or in this stage of the design process, the sky is the limit on the ideas that we generate. So there's different ways that we can do brainstorming. Okay? We can use post-it notes, meaning that we're looking for, in this case, upstream processing, product production, these are the different ideas of how to solve this problem. Each idea is put on a post-it note, and we put those onto the wall or onto a board. Free writing, which we'll probably do for the activity that we're going to start today. In the notebook, I'm just, you know, bullet points of ideas for brainstorming. Blurting out. Like if we were in a class setting, and if I were asking for you guys to generate ideas like right now, hey, what do you think about this? You know, people are shouting out answers. We probably want to document that somehow or putting it, written, writing it out. There's also what's called forced association. The ideas are created by mentally forcing the association of two seemingly unrelated items. You can use what's called a scamper. This is really great too for piling on or for making an addition to or innovating on something that already exists. So this is something that we could potentially use. You know, mind mapping, start with the basic idea we branch off, so a visual way of brainstorming our solutions. Another example of mine, solving global warming. This is, you know, this is what we're trying to solve. Here are the different ideas on how we would do that, and this is a graphic way of organizing our brainstorming ideas. When we're doing this, we wanna make sure that we're documenting all of the work. So in today's activity, you'll work in pairs, and as a pair, I wanna make sure that you're getting all of the ideas written down. So typically there's gonna be a note taker. If possible, take photographs of the ideas and compile ideas after the session. So if you are working as pairs and you're each generating ideas, we wanna combine those lists. Again, we're going for quantity, as many ideas as possible. All right, so let's talk about then concept generation dysfunctions. So what that means is it's something that's happening that's forcing you or it's, it's limiting your ability to brainstorm or come up with ideas. Some of the reasons why that might happen would be you're utilizing a poor design brief. So the design brief that you're using, which we haven't looked at before, but we will, is not worded properly or the problem's not clear. So having a poor brief would make it difficult to brainstorm. Assuming there's only one right answer, some people will get stuck on their first idea this is my idea to solve this problem, and then they have a hard time thinking of other ways to do it. Hooked on the first solution, considering ideas from only one team member. Remember the rules we talked about, we want everybody contributing to this process. And so these are the reasons that would make brainstorming a little bit more difficult. Other things might be feeling too anxious to finish. And that's not gonna be a problem in here. I'm gonna give you the time to work through this process, but if it were really compressed, like, hey, you have five minutes to get this done, that could cause issues of brainstorming. Coming frustrated by the lack of success or getting hooked on a solution that almost works. Right, so these are the reasons why brainstorming might not work the way we would like it to. If you do get stuck, here's some suggestions on what you can do. Combine promising partial solutions. So if you have different ideas on your list, maybe those can be combined to create a better solution. Try a different brainstorming technique. If as a team you were using your post-it notes as the technique for for collecting your ideas. If that's not working, maybe you start blurting it out, or maybe we're just writing these down. Uh, maybe you start working individually rather than working as a group and then come back together. So if the group is not working to come up with a lot of ideas, maybe working as individuals will. And maybe doing more research. Consider concepts used by other designs to solve maybe a similar problem, or concepts employed in unrelated products. So again, in this PowerPoint covering brainstorming, rules, the techniques, 
what we do with concept generation dysfunctions, and if we get stuck, what we do. So we're going to apply all these techniques to today's activity, and let me pull that up real quick. This is 1.4 on the LMS. It is called product improvement. The idea is, is you're going to take a product that already exists. So in this case, we have a coffee cup or a drink container. And as a team, I want you to brainstorm ideas on ways to improve on this container. Does it work in its current state? Yeah, I mean, it would hold coffee because it's foam, it would probably keep it warm for a little while. But could we improve on this? Could we make this a better product so that everybody would want to buy my coffee cup? I think so. And remember that when we start brainstorming ideas for this, the sky is the limit, right? So if you start thinking, well, I want my coffee cup to levitate at mouth level so that I don't have to use my hands and when I tip my head back, so does this. Do we have the technology to do that? I don't know, but that doesn't mean it can't be an idea that we add to our brainstorm. You know, I want an LED on my cup that shows the temperature so I know exactly how hot my coffee is. Great, that's something that we could do to improve on this product. So you will work in pairs and with your partner, we're gonna come up with first just a list. Remember, we're going for quantity. As many ideas as we can come up with is what we're gonna do for this and we're gonna document that in your notebook. Each of you will document that in your notebook. From there, once you have the ideas, maybe you pick out the best ideas. So if I started with a list of 25, 30 ideas, maybe I pick out the seven or eight that I wanna incorporate into my actual cup. So as a team, you're gonna decide on which of these are we gonna incorporate into our cup. And then the last step is I want you to draw what that cup would look like. So if I'm incorporating those ideas into my new coffee container, what would that container look like? Okay. All of this is going to be documented in the engineer's notebook. Either, even though you're working in pairs, I do want you to both have all the ideas written out and each have a sketch or a prototype of what this would look like. There are also conclusion questions at the back end of this activity. So I want to make sure that you answer those four questions as well. When the questions are done, along with what was in the notebook, we're going to have all of this submitted to the LMS.